Good afternoon, everyone. Today is the Feast of St. Thomas the Apostle. And I thought I'd give a little reflection on, on one of the readings at Mass today um, that I, I found to be quite um, consoling and, and comforting. Um, there, of course, we it's a feast day, so often on feast day at Mass, you use the readings for the feast rather than for the day. Uh, a lot of times, even for minor minor memorials and optional memorials, you'll still use the readings of the day because there's a rhythm to the stories of, especially in the, in the New Testament, um, or in the, in the first reading, in the first reading, um, they're connected. And so the, to have a, a fluid um, reading of scripture. But of course, for feast, it's a higher level of, of celebration. And so often you'll still use, you will use the, the readings for the feast. So um, today, our readings are from our first reading is from Ephesians, uh, chapter two, um, and so I thought I'd read it and just give you a, a, my reflection. Uh, it's very similar to what I preached on this morning at Mass. So um, it says uh, a reading from the the letter of, of Saint Paul to the Ephesians, brothers and sisters, you are no longer strangers and sojourners. But you are fellow citizens with the Holy Ones and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the capstone. Through him, the whole structure is held together and grows into a temple sacred to the Lord. In him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place of God in the spirit the word of the lord thanks be to god there's so many moments in in, in parts of this this reading that uh, are are beautiful and have imagery uh so much so that i mean i could probably talk for an hour or more <laughs> on all the different elements of this particular reading but uh, the the things that I want to pull out are, are two things. Number one, the idea of a home, and of course Jesus being uh, capstone. Um, I smile because every time I I read a, about a capstone or a cornerstone, I'm reminded of a homily I gave at Saint Elizabeth, one of the teachers there who's listening uh, right now. Every time I I think about her, <laughs> every time. So Jan, you know who you are. Um, so I smile every time I read capstone or cornerstone because there is a difference. Um, cornerstone uh, is the first stone laid on a building. Um, it's the cornerstone that says, you know, church established here, blah, 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 blah. But capstone is, is in an arch of stones that are they're usually in, in like a roof where the, the capstone is, the, is the, the crown that, you know, through physics keeps all of the other stones in line. You, know, you remove that, the pressure that or the, the, the structure and the, and the strength of the arc is lost because it collapses in on itself. And so again, the, the image of Jesus as the capstone um, is a very important image, recognizing that he is the center of everything and it needs to be the center of everything for stability and strength. Um, but to have that in the context of the home. You know, our true home is heaven. Our true home, more specifically, is Christ. Christ, unity with Christ, is our true home. And where are we united perfectly with Christ but in heaven? And so, yes, heaven is our home. This is where our goal is. It's our our, our end destination, our final end, right? But it's more than that, because really, what is heaven? But perfect union with God. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And Christ is our means by which we enter into that home that is unity with the Trinity. And so, again, as Paul says to the Ephesians, you are no longer strangers or sojourners, but our fellow citizens of the Holy Ones, the members of the household of God. That imagery of a household, a home. He goes on to say, 
you know, a dwelling place of God in the spirit, you know, a, a sacred temple. All of these structures are places of, of comfort. I think of my own home growing up, you know, my mom and I lived together, obviously. That was my place of refuge. The place where I could rest a moment. Uh, I, um, you know, had a lot of you know, learning disabilities. I have dyslexia and probably minor ADD or, or something of the like, you know, learning disabilities. When I was younger, we obviously didn't know that until I was second, fourth grade in, in, in Texas where, where I got tested and realized I had dyslexia. But um, I remember my mom, I remember having conversations with my mom later in life, you know, and she looking back and realizing, okay, I was a latchkey kid. So, and often, oftentimes, because my mom worked, she's a single mother, I was one of the last kids to be picked up at latchkey, which is fine. It's a part of life. But I'd be so good throughout the entire day. And my mom would, would say that she would lament because it would be like, I would be so good. And she'd hear good reports. Oh, Zach was so good today. You know, he was, he was productive in class or he was kind or blah, 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 blah. All these positive comments. And then I would get home and I would just like, bleh, like explode on her. Like, um, and it, it, she, she reflects on how at the time she was like, why can't you be good for me? <laughs> um, you know, you're so good during the day and I'm your mother and I love you and I just want to see that side of you. And uh, of course, she wouldn't be saying that to me, you know, um, but later on reflecting and looking back on that, she, she, she kind of realized and in conference, she kind of conveyed this to me and I agree with it, that it's like, as soon as mom picked me up, as soon as she picked me up, I was like, as soon as I stepped into that car, and it's just me and her. And then we went home. And it's just me and her. Like, I could relax. And this is all subconscious, you know. Home was a place of comfort. It was a place of stability. And therefore, a place where I could let go. Um, and that's what Christ offers in his church, in his home, a place to rest and just let go, a place of stability. And we see this in a church that doesn't have stability, how people don't come to it. And unfortunately, not every priest is, is good at creating that stability. Not every uh, parish community is good at creating that stability that Christ wants to offer through his church. You know, because we're, cause we're wounded. We're, we're, we're imperfect. But the reality is that Christ wants to offer us that stability, offer us that strength and that, that the capstone provides for the rest of the stones in the ark, in the arch. That that is what Christ desires to give us in his church, in his unity, in him being the center of our lives and the center of our homes. Um, that it can always be a place of refuge. It can be a place of stability, a place we can call home. And feel comfortable and at peace and at rest. And that is a place we need now more than ever. Um, and I say that in full knowledge that we are in a very unstable time. And those times of instability in our world are, are not going to stop. They're not going to stop. Until the end of time. There will always be chaos in the world to one degree or another. But Christ, as I said earlier this week, Christ allows us to have peace in the midst of that. To have a place that even if you are unable to make it to a church, you can call God into your presence. That's why I'm so grateful that 
the spiritual communion prayer has been so often said in the last couple months. It's a true, in a certain sense, in a very real way, kind of a lost treasure that has been rediscovered in, in this time. And I hope that it's a prayer that continues to be prayed fervently beyond this pandemic, beyond this moment of crisis, moment of stru struggle, that even those who are, are able to come to Mass and receive the Eucharist will continue to pray that spiritual communion prayer, will continue to invite the Lord and Christ in, to be the capstone of their home and their houses and their families and their relationships, that God's love may permeate through each and every one of those things and, and allow those things to be parts of, of stability, moments and places of stability in each of our lives. So, the beauty of reading scripture is that God speaks to us in a way that we, we need to hear Him. And so, I, I encourage you to read today's readings um, and, and, and continue to ask the Lord to help you yearn for and find that strength and that stability that he offers through his church, through the scriptures, the sacraments, uh, through that relationship, through that, that, um, that household that he, did, that he offers us. And with that, let us turn to our Lord in prayer, uh, asking for that grace to invite him into our homes. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. For all those we promise to pray for, all our special intentions, all those who are um, searching for our Lord and struggling to find Him, that um, they will see the people, that the Lord will send someone into their life, and they will recognize how God has placed people in their lives to help them find that peace and that strength, that stability for a renewal of our church. Um, that it will regain and, and have um, that identity of, of being a, a place of refuge for us sinners and for the whole world that in every moment we may be open to the divine mercy of our Lord as he desires to pour it in, 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 into our hearts. For the sick, the suffering, the poor and the needy, for those who care for the sick, for our political leaders and government leaders, and for everybody else we love and promise to pray for. You expire, Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O font of life, unfathomable divine mercy, Envelop the whole world and empty yourself upon us. And will blow in water, which gushed forth in the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us. I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth in the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us. I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth in the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us. I trust in you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. For the Pope and Walls, and, or sorry, went to, went to Rosary mode. For our eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. 
for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, an atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Eternal God, in whom mercy is in us, and the treasure of compassion is inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we may not despair or become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, and be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. O most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Immaculate heart of Mary, pray for us. Mary conceived without sin, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Faustina, pray for us. Saint Thomas the Apostle, pray for us. Saint Andrew, Saint Francis Xavier, and all our patron saints, pray for us. Father Cape and all the angels and saints in heaven, pray for us. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you for joining me this afternoon for our reflection and praying in the chaplet. Uh, know that I love you. I'm praying for you. Keep praying for me and my brother priest. And I will see you on the next video. God bless.